Um, let's see, I would, uh, uh, welcome Carly, I see you there, and, I, and Dawn and Beth, welcome. Uh, Lisa and Emily. And uh, Jeannie, I saw that uh, Joe Richardson actually said she was gonna join today, so that's exciting. <laughs> That's yeah, that is. I was on mute. Sorry, it takes a second. <laughs> yes, welcome everybody. We might start. Um, I, I'll keep on admitting people, but you might want to start with our, our little announcements. announcements. Maybe okay. we can chat for a couple more minutes, just since it's, it's only 601 and if people come in, I don't want them to miss all the announcements. Oh, that's a good point. I'm just one of those people that love to start on time and, and honor those that get here on time. But yeah, whatever. I'm good. Yeah. And here's Joe. Uh, oh, yeah, there's Joe. Oh, no, wait. What, do I see Joe? Oh, she's connecting. Um, let's see. Um, Welcome, Joe. It's been a long time. We, we can't see you, but it's nice to see your name. <laughs> Hi, how are you guys? Good. 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 Uh, Joe Richardson used to be the, uh, was the previous Boulder Art Association president. Oh. <laughs> nice. And now she is, uh, are you still a student, Joe? Yep, yep, I'm getting my MFA from Leslie. Look, I've got my shirt on. Wow, oh yeah, your shirt, I see. <laughs> <laughs> is that a um, resident program, the Leslie University one? Is that- What's that? Where you go and you spend like three or four weeks? Yep. Every yep. summer? Yep, yep, like it? twice a year. Actually, we do in the summer and then one in the winter too. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's a great program. Oh, nice, okay. Yeah, I've thought about that one. Uh, and let's see, uh, Emily, have uh, Emily? We've got on. Are you? Have you been on before? No. <laughs> nice to see you. Um, let's see. Uh, and I think we probably should get started. What do you think, Annie? You want to wait a few more minutes? No, I think that's good. I, we got quite a few people who just entered in the last two minutes. So this okay, is okay. Great. I'm going to get started with some uh, quick announcements, and then we'll get into our uh, featured art artist speaker uh, Jessica Moon. And uh, so, a couple quick announcements. So we try to help people get more connected uh, during these monthly meetings. So, so welcome to the Boulder Art Association monthly meeting. Um, we're a nonprofit organization completely supported by our members and by volunteers. And uh, so um, if anybody wants to get more involved with the arts in Boulder, we're a great group to, to volunteer for and work with. Um, just to get people more connected, if you want to put your um, information in the chat window, you can say where you live, your Instagram account or your website. Uh, what kind of art you make, or if you're not an artist, what kind of art you like to see uh, or purchase or whatever, you can say all that in the chat. And it just allows people to get more connected and you might get more Instagram followers. So that's kind of a, a fun way to uh, get better connected. Um, let's see, uh, we as an organization uh, have rented a wall space at the art gallery in downtown Boulder. And uh, we've got featured Boulder Art Association members that have uh, their art on that wall. And right now, it's uh, Nancy Kirkendall and Astrid Poston and um, several other artists throughout the rest of the year. And uh, we'll talk about our B show coming up in just a second, the What's the Buzz show. But uh, it's a great way to see art at this uh, particular gallery in downtown Boulder. So I highly recommend stopping by and talking with Rob, the owner of that, of that gallery. Uh, and uh, by the way, I love to make this really interactive. So if anybody has any comments or questions as we go along, please feel free to uh, uh, speak up. You can just unmute yourself. We try to make this pretty informal. Um, so uh, let's see, we'll go next to uh, every Saturday we do um, 
art critiques. And this is a community event. It's a really fun event where we have uh, feature five different artists every week. Usually spend about 15 minutes on each artist's um, art, whatever it happens to be. And we welcome all kinds of art. Sometimes we had somebody who does videos, we've had people who do music, uh, but mostly it's visual art. And uh, you can show your art and then also get feedback from the other artists in the group. And it's just a, a really fun, constructive kind of group of folks that come um, almost every week. So I, I highly recommend coming to, to this event on Saturdays. The information's on our website. Uh, it's from 11 to 1215. Um, and a lot of the folks on the meeting today uh, come to that, to the art critique every week. Uh, let's see, next up we've got uh, the What's the Buzz show and the call for artists is going on right now. This is our uh, uh, summer show for the Boulder Art Association. So we invite all members of the Boulder Art Association, Art Association to participate in this show. And uh, this time around we have a theme of what's the buzz. And then also we started last time doing these small eight by eight paintings every uh, every person entering the show does a painting of a particular uh, topic last time we did sheep this time around it's bees so you those there's going to be a grid of um, bee themed art an eight by eight inch grid of all these different uh, uh, <laughs> bee themed kinds of things I think it's going to be a really great show uh, that runs from July 2nd to July 31st and the call for entry closes on June 13th. That's coming up actually, I think this weekend. So uh, the time is running out for that. But um, uh, if you're interested, please please let us know and enter that show. And uh, uh, the other thing is the opening reception. Oops, let me just get the right slide here. The opening reception for this event is on um, first Friday. Uh, of Novo on July 2nd. And that opening is from six to nine. Jeannie, I think I got that time right. Hopefully I got that time right. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, and uh, it's it's gonna be a really fun, uh, we're gonna have music there and I think we'll have some refreshments. And uh, if you haven't been to this, this new gallery in North Boulder, it's called the Bus Stop Apartments Gallery. They have four really large sliding uh, glass garage doors that we can open up and allow people to uh, basically it's like being outside when those doors are open so I think this opening reception is going to be really fun and then we're going to be open during the weekends uh, during the month of July um, and this is an all-volunteer event and our last show was really at the the Museum of Boulder was really fun I think this one's going to be great as well I know, Jeannie, do you have anything to add that I missed? Yes, them? yes. We, we are going to have some fabulous door prizes for people mm. at the reception. Be, you have to be in person to win. And I think uh, Randy Hale, who was a, he donated the painting that he did at uh, the last time he did a demo for us. And so I think we're going to have that as can be auctioned off. Is that correct, correct Jeannie? Yes. A Annie is actually handling that. Thank you. Annie. Yeah, it'll be a silent auction so people can um, just sign their name and keep checking back to see if they need to up the bid. And I'm starting to see some folks post some interesting paintings, bee paintings on Instagram. I know Jill who is our uh, who runs our marketing committee has already finished her B, and I know other people. I'm still working on my B. I'm always the slowest artist uh, around. So, <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, next up uh, is coming up this Saturday is at the Avalon. Uh, is the um, uh, this art show? It's basically an art music and dance festival that the Boulder Art Association is co-sponsoring with uh, Rick DeLago, uh, Denver Art Society, and uh, out Boulder County. I think it's gonna be a really fun event. Last year, we did this event and it was a drive-through. And this is this really big parking lot at the Avalon Ballroom um, on Arapahoe Road in Boulder. And uh, 
Uh, this year, it's going to be, uh, there's no restrictions as far as we know, and people can walk through, and I think it's going to be a really, really fun event. Uh, Jeannie, I don't know, do you have anything to add on this one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, there will be belly dancers, there'll be live musicians, there'll be a tortilla truck, food truck, I believe, and, and 60 artists, and the BAA will have a table there, and I'll be manning or womaning the table. So I'll uh, stop by and say hi. Great. Yeah, this is going to be a really, really fun event. Um, let's see. And then uh, did, this uh, this art show is coming up, the uh, Ride On a Bike Art Exhibition. Jeannie, do you know about this one? You can tell us. Yeah, do you have a, oh, you don't have a flyer for it, huh? I don't, no. <laughs> okay. It's, it's uh, sponsored also by Nobo and it's free to register to apply to get in and basically you can do any kind of art either inspired by bikes actual bikes you can make something with bike parts and it's uh in september i believe also at the nobo i think that's where it will. oh there look at that there it is oh so that yeah i, I do have at least an image not a flyer <laughs> okay <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, yeah, I know Jeannie, you've been posting bike paintings on your Facebook and Instagram, <laughs> I think. So I'm um, looking forward to, to seeing those in person. Um, and does anybody else have any other quick announcements they want to say uh, before we get started? Um, I think we're, and Annie, I think you've got art at the center coming up. Is that correct? Right. Yeah, the deadline. Um is coming up the end of June, I think June 28th. Um, people can submit up to six um, images. To, um, and we usually take, unless we have a huge entry, we usually take something from everybody. Um, and the only requirement we have is that it's a community center. So the art has to be kid friendly. Um, and then we have our reception on Thursday is July 8th, I believe is the first, that Thursday. Um, okay. Sorry. And that's in oh, Netherlands. In that, my that's head. It. Yeah. Thursday, July 8th is an opening reception. And those are really fun. People from the community come out and they get to vote on their favorite pieces of art. We usually have music and then there's wine and um, appetizers. So it's a great event. Right, and that's at the community center in Bolt in uh, Netherlands. Right, and if they if um, somebody can just contact me, um, or on the community center website, there's a link for art at the center, and there's all the information there. I don't think I've updated it with this new show because I just got the date for it. But um, yeah, go ahead. I'll type my email into the chat, and people can contact me directly. Okay. Great. Thank you, Ed. Sure. Thanks, Annie. Uh, so next up, I think we're going to move to uh, Jessica. We've got Jessica uh, Moon. Um, it, could you pronounce your name, Jessica? Yeah, I'm really it's terrible at pronouncing names. It's Bernstein Schiano. Okay, it's great. Left. So uh, I, I think I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you, Jessica. And uh, what I'll do is uh, spotlight your video so that everybody will be able to uh, see what you're doing. And I don't know if you're going to go to your slides first, or um, did you want to? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to go to the slides first, but just I'm Jessica Moon and I live in Nederland, Colorado, for those of you who just joined in. Um, I work with a variety of different mediums. I've lived in Boulder County since 1986 and then uh, moved back and forth. I lived in Mongolia for a few years and then would return back like every other year. So that country has a huge influence on my life and what I witnessed there. And um, my concern for the environment also really influences my work, which I'm going to show you some pictures of um, different uh, materials and items I've worked in um, with the slides. So uh, yeah, we could just go right to the... Okay. And uh, Jessica, you were saying earlier, you live in Netherlands also yeah i live in netherland yeah uh so let's see here's your go to your slides here can everybody see that 
Yep. Okay, great. So go ahead, Jessica, and I'll advance the slides as you need to. Okay, great, thanks. Um, so I work in painting, mixed media collage, sculpture, installation, and most recently I've um, dabbled in um, murals. Okay, next slide. Uh, let's see. Um, so it all started, this is some really old work, but I thought it'd be interesting to see just the progression of um, how my art is transformed. Uh, I started doing a lot of painting and I had a whole series of work that focused on endangered animals. Um, while I was in Mongolia, I worked on a biodiversity project that protected, um, it just built awareness, public awareness about um, the biodiversity, the loss of biodiversity there. So that um, got me thinking, that, that sparked my uh, inspiration for creating more work that dealt with endangered animals. And then um, also I'm concerned with consumerism. So when I would return back to Mongolia, I would see the effects of um, just the open market economy had on the culture as they were prepared to deal with the, the waste problem from all these consumer goods. Um, so like the, uh, the goodbye kitty is, it comments on consumerism and waste. So those are ac acrylic, watercolor, and pastel work that I started with. Um, so next slide. Uh, so I, I would do those art and craft fairs, um, you know, put up your tent. And I, I got a little tired of that. And I just felt like I was kind of in a rut artistically. And um, I, I, I took about like two years off from making any work. And then I took a art workshop at Anderson Ranch Art Center in sculpture, which I had never done. And, uh, and then I really, um, I really found an interest in using reclaimed materials because my art, it does, it comments on the, on climate change right now and the environment and, and just kind of the Anthropocene epic, which is how humans are altering the planet. And these are, um, so these were made during an art residency. After I did a workshop, then I applied for an art residency in sculpture and spent about six months there um, in 2006. And from that residency, this next, the, I started working with um, inner tubes, just a lot of found objects. So these are sewn bike inner tubes, uh, not bike inner tubes, tractor inner tubes um, that I used to make these rubber rabbits. Next slide. Uh, Jessica, sorry to interrupt. Um, I wanted to mention that you're going to be doing some um, a demo of some collage at, yeah. at the end here. So if anybody wants to do their own artwork while we're doing uh, the presentation, while Jessica's doing the presentation, feel free to do that. And we could even talk about it at the end if you want to share. So if you want to get some artwork out and, and work on some stuff, that would be uh, fun as well. So. Uh, whatever, whatever works for you. Sorry, Jessica, go ahead. No feed if you have any questions to so just, just ask. Um, this piece is, uh, I, it's, it's funny because it looks like the coronavirus now, but I made it well before that time um, that we knew about how coronavirus would affect our lives so drastically. Um, this, I called this um, inflation, global inflation, but it's just the tractor. I would take the parts that I would use the tractor inner tubes for and just try to try to reuse every single part that, um, from the object that I found. So these are just the valves from the tractor tubes from the rabbits and also from the bike inner tubes because I've made a lot of art with punctured bike inner tubes as well. Um, next slide. Um, this one is titled Well Hung. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> Uh, it's made with punctured bike inner tubes. And I just came across these wooden balls when I was doing that residency in Anderson Ranch and just one thing led to another and I just shoved these balls in the inner tubes. <laughs> then I started stapling to the wall. So uh, I guess the working, um, I guess when I created this, I wasn't really thinking about the end product. I didn't really know where it was going. It's more exploration and it kind of made me feel like a kid again, which was, really fun. Um, next slide. Oh, sorry, if I don't have my cursor on there. Okay. <laughs> um, 
So the continuing on, I guess my art, I tend to um, cut up a lot of objects and rearrange them and repurpose them, giving them a new life form. So here I started collecting um, plastic shopping bags and fusing them together and then inflating them with air, kind of reminiscent of the, you know, the plastic bag you see caught in the tree just flying around. So, and I've continued to do these inflatables. Um, I did one last year, a sea turtle, um, which is the next slide. And that was um, for a art festival in um, Fort Myers, Florida. Okay, next slide. And then installation. So I feel like I get obsessed with certain materials and then I just put them away. Um, this one was a little bit harder to put away uh, because it consisted of 10,000 punctured bike inner tubes that I cut up and then um, fed through chicken wire, almost like a carpet or rug. And so this piece was at the Boulder Museum of Contemporary Art. Um, and uh, yeah, I haven't worked with inner tubes since. <laughs> uh, okay, next slide. And this is another installation I did at the Longmont Museum. It was a tunnel um, and it narrowed in on the other side so you could actually walk through it. And um, the inner tubes do a great job with um, sound. Um, so there was some music playing outside and when you'd walk into the tunnel, the sound would just kind of get muffled. So that was, it was kind of a piece that you could uh, experience from all different senses. You, I mean, you could smell the inner tubes one and you could, it's very tactile. Um, and then you could also, um, it affected your sense of sound as well. Jessica, did you allow folks to touch this when they were in the museum? Yeah, 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 oh. yeah. I didn't really know what was gonna happen with the one at uh, Bimoka, but people were just like, during the opening, people were just lounging on it and going <laughs> through and made another little tunnel that people were going through. So it was really fun to see people interact with it. Um, next slide. Um, and then I, this is more with a plastic bag. So this piece was at Redline um, during one of the biennials. And this, um, it was about sustainability and it was called Artist Footprint. And so I decided to create a shelter, a teepee out of plastic bags and um, found PVC pipe. And I biked from Boulder to Redline to install it. Um, I, and um, then there's a TV with a little uh, flame, like a fire on the <laughs> interior. <laughs> okay, next slide. Um, and then I then it um, I started working with collage. I I wanted to work in a medium that didn't take up so much space to store. Um, and these uh, I would just I just started by painting backgrounds and then layering tissue paper and other found papers on top, and um, just inspired from nature um, and just my passion for being outside. Next slide. Uh, there's another one. So I'm just uh, now I'm set obsessed with birds. So <laughs> there's been a lot of birds in my work. Um, and these are about 22 by 30 inches on paper. So just acrylic painting and then layering tissue paper and then uh, other found paper. Like a lot of these, the blues are from magazines. Okay, next slide. Uh, and then I, I also make my own paper as well. So I, I made all the paper for the trees and the fox so that would cut up the shapes and then glue them on. Uh, so this was a little bit more deliberate than the, the COVID cuts, which I'll show you at the end. Um, next slide. Uh, this is a fragmented landscape. So. I get, sometimes I will create a collage and then the meaning comes in later. And this one, I, it just speaks to just how we're altering our landscapes. Um, so I did a, a series of these as well. And this is just all magazines that are cut up and rearranged. Uh, next slide. Um, and then uh, animals, just how they're being affected by the Anthropocene and just kind of, uh, I guess thinking about how 
what they would be saying right now if they could <laughs> if they could talk to us right now um, or expressing. So this is a polar call. And then this was the first polar bear uh, collage I did, which later became an idea for the mural that I did, um, which is in Boulder. Next slide. Uh, and then I did a whole series messages from birds. So the Audubon Society published uh, an article, um, a study actually that the, about 300 and over 350 birds have been determined to be climate threatened or endangered. So my goal right now, this is an ongoing series is to um, depict these birds um, through collage. So this is a lot more deliberate. Um, it takes a lot more planning to do this type of collage. And I'll, I'll briefly kind of go through my process on how I, how I do these. Um, but this is a painted background and then um, just found paper put together to make this hairy woodpecker. Uh, next slide. And this is the piping plover. So I, I, it's messages from birds. So I take, um, I try to find text that also comments on climate change. So like, you know, if you read the fine print, you can see little um, words that might allude to the, the effects of their climate change. Um, next slide. And then I, I really like the spontaneity of collage. And I found that with the, the other pieces, I mean, I like the birds and I, uh, the collage birds, but I found just painting the bird on top of a collage background um, allowed for a little bit more spontaneity. So I'm kind of experimenting with both either painting or collage. Next slide. And then mural art. So this is kind of taking collage in a, in a large scale, huge scale. Um, this, the polar bear is wheat pasted on as, and so is the iceberg. And then I painted the background and the stripes. And so I just, I thought the ephemeral quality of using paper um, is kind of a, a metaphor for what, you know, the polar bears and climate change is what's happening with those animals in that environment. Um, but I used, um, it should last about five years because I used a golden, like a thick, heavy medium mixed with um, water to make this and wheat paste to make this, um, to make the wheat paste stay. Um, so it's still up. And this is on the side of the Liquor Mart building, the old Liquor Mart building on Canyon. Oh, I was wondering where it was. I, I think I've, I've seen it there. <laughs> yeah, I know there's a truck that's parked right in front, so it's hard to see sometimes. But there's a bunch of other uh, murals that are next to it, and that's at the far end. Yeah. And next slide. Just a second, sorry. And then uh, that led to when the coronavirus, COVID, and I was trying to think of what I was gonna do. I wanted to do something artistically that, that spoke to how I was feeling during this time. So I started, I started with one collage and then I thought, well, I'll just do one every day that my life has been affected by COVID. And I, I lasted for a year and then, <laughs> which was almost about the time that, you know, we, we've slowly been able to not wear masks and we got our vaccines. And um, so, yeah, these are, these are very spon spontaneous. They're not planned. Um, I do them in different ways. Like sometimes I'll just cut up a piece and glue it down. And then I'm committed to that piece. And then I have to find other paper or shapes that will work well with the piece that I just put down. And sometimes, I've like in the orange ones down here, those are cut up paintings that I just was repurposing some of my old work and cutting them up and then building on top of um, other pieces as well. Um, Jessica, what's, what's the size of these? These are 10 inches by 10 inches. So they're, they're small and they're, and they're quick. Um, the ones that seem more involved are just, I just cut up other paper, other paintings, and then layered on top of that. So um, some are a lot more simple, minimal, and others have a little more detail. Uh, did you do any bees? 
No, but uh, when you were talking about bees, I was thinking about that. Oh, uh, we'd love we'd love to see a bee collage in the exhibit. Yeah. <laughs> Think about it. Okay. Yeah. That would be fun. Um, and I think I don't. Oh, the next slide actually is a view oh. of the bus stop gallery. So this was um, midway through. I how many did I have here? Um, I guess I could do the math. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So 13 times nine, which is what, 117? Yes, 117. Okay, so that was 117, mid, almost halfway there. It's interesting because this is very similar to what we're doing with the B exhibit. It'll be a, a grid like this of, of people's art. Oh, nice, yeah. B themed art, yeah. Yeah, I have a few of the COVID cuts um, that are at the Arvada Center. There's a salon show um, called Viral Influence. And it's, I haven't seen it yet, um, but it's up until the end of August. But I know there's some other artists that are featured in one gallery. And then I have three of these that are uh, amongst many other um, pieces of work there. So it should be interesting to see. Yeah. And I think that's, that's it, yeah. Yeah, that's it. So then um, I can just talk about like materials I use for collage if, um, and then the process I would use for that. Um, so I'll just switch to my document camera. That'll be easier. Um, all right, so, um, and can you hear me okay? Yes, yes. Okay. I can move my computer a little bit closer. All right, so um, you can use a variety of substrates. I With the COVID cuts, I use paper, but um, you can also um, use wood, cardboard, um, bookends. Uh, this one I experimented with actually mounting a um, piece of paper onto the wood using um, a, mat, a heavy matte medium and then just putting um, some heavy weights on top and it, it stays that way too. It's kind of nice to have a hard surface. And I find the smaller paper doesn't buckle as much um, as well as, I mean, obviously wood's not gonna buckle at all. So that's a really nice surface to work on. <clears throat> Here's a, a small one I did um, on a cradle panel board and uh, So just with paint and then collage. But what I what I like to do is, um, well, I'll go to some more materials that I use. So I will use um, X-Acto knives to cut out the small areas. Um, I have a circle cutter, which is kind of fun to cut out circles with. It's an X-Acto circle cutter. Um, this is a, it's like a finger knife. Um, it moves around. Um, I'm trying to find one that's a little bit more. This this one pivots, and I want one that does it. Uh, this is just a roller cutter that you can you know cut curvy lines with. I like to use um, kitchen scissors. I find they're really sharp, and then um, some tweezers to pick out some small pieces of paper if, if needed, and then paint. Um, you can always add paint to your pieces too, either before or after. I, for my glue, um, I use, um, it's, a, it's a matte medium, it's a fluid matte medium. So I'll show you what, it, this is the one I use, golden. Um, I find that that works pretty well. You can also use like, if, I mean, you can also use a glue stick Really with collage, it's nice because you can pretty much use anything you want. Um, but if you're trying, if you're making a piece that's gonna, you want to be more archival, I would use like a pH um, neutral, like an acid-free glue stick or type of glue. But Jessica, when you showed the uh, the golden, it, it was upside down. I think maybe. Oh, okay. Um, just, I just want to kind of let you know, keep in mind that. Oh, How's there we that? go. Much better. Is it still backwards? 
No, it's not backwards on our side. Okay. It's backwards to me, but <laughs> on my camera. <laughs> um, so I'll just turn the camera around in case everything else is. Okay. But that's, this is, is this upside down now? Um, the no. bear is now upside down, yeah. There we go. Okay. Now we're back. Um, we're all right sided. Uh, so those cutting items, paper, I use magazines and like old books, junk mail, newspapers. So like I'll, sometimes I'll go on eBay and just like find um, people that are giving away or not eBay, Craigslist, giving away old books and stuff like that. So these are great. You go to, you know, vintage um, or uh, not vintage stores, but thrift stores to find old books and stuff. But a lot of everything I use is pretty much um, recycled and found. So what I do is I have these, I make different files of all the type of paper. So this is like vintage paper, old vintage books. Um, that I'll use to access. Um, I just like the, the brown paper. It kind of goes well um, with other colors. And let's see what else did I want to show you. Um, oh yeah, I'll use um, like tissue papers. Also, um, that's what I used right here with some tissue paper. Um, so right now, if you wanted to make a collage, you could just, you know, go find any type of paper. You could find magazines, junk mail, um, wallpaper, some wall old wallpaper scraps. For things that I would use as well. Um, I like to have also like a a wet rag nearby to wipe your hands because I feel like that mat, the mat medium gets really sticky and it covers your fingers. Um, and then I use a cup of water um, just to kind of rinse my brush out if too much glue is on there, but I tend not to use too much water and I'll show you like um, kind of what happens with the mat medium because then it tends to buckle the paper a little bit. Um, and so I get, I have two different ways, like I was saying with my process. Sometimes I'm just looking through images, like I've cut up a bunch here um, and just finding colors, shapes, um, images that look interesting to me. Uh, and then sometimes when I get right in the studio, what I'll do is I'll just start to cut up a bunch of those papers that I found. And so this is just a container full of just cut up animals that I might use in a collage. Um, but I find it helps, especially coming in sometimes not knowing, just looking at this white piece of paper, it's like, oh, where am I gonna start? So it's nice just to, to go in and just start cutting right away and then I have something to do. Um, and then other times the collage work I do, like, this piece, these are from the Messages from Birds series. And so to make this, I, I do a bunch of sketches of, oh, I found a bee. There's one. <laughs> um, but I have some sketches of birds that I'll do. And then I'll, I'll find one that I want to work on with a collage. And then I'll break it down to simple shapes. So like for the, the woodpecker, for example, what I'll do is I'll draw it on like um, tracing paper. And then I'll find colors of paper that match the bird. And these have um, text from like some climate change articles. And then sometimes I'll paint the paper if I like I couldn't find any red, so I just painted the paper red with a thin like a translucent, so you can kind of see the words a little bit. Um, but then I would take I take um, the graphite paper underneath, and then I'll place 
like let's say I'm gonna a gray wing, then I'll I have the the gray paper here, and then the graphite paper, and then I'll just trace like if I wanted the head here, I'll just get my pencil, and then I'll just trace over that shape to build the bird up. So this obviously could work for any animal, but I just like the graphic, the simple shapes um, that collage allow for. And then I'll pull it off so I can see the image here, and then I can just take my scissors and cut the bird head. Keeping in mind, of course, that it's the next shape is it's also directional. So I've, I've made a few cuts of backwards bodies before, but that's one way to go about it. Um, to make something more representational, I guess, not not so abstract is to make a drawing and then trace it on. And then it's like, it's like a puzzle putting it together because it becomes a, a puzzle work. Um, so that would be the head of the woodpecker that matches right here. And then I would continue on with the beak. Sometimes I'll just cut a big body out and then layer the pieces on top of that. Um, it's a little bit easier to, to match up. So that's, the bird series, what I do, it, it takes a bit more time. It's a, it's a long process. I mean, once you got all the pieces cut out, I feel like collage is pretty quick. It's just finding finding the pieces that takes some, some time. Um, so I'll just start showing you like how I might start and then I can show you how I would glue some stuff down. Um, but I really, with Claude, I really like the idea of the regeneration of the paper and upcycling. And I think that's what really attracted me to collage work. Um, so I'm just gonna find some animals to cut out here. And I'll show you my process for cutting out animals. I'll just use this one, this robin. Um, so I definitely use a cutting mat, and I have one here. I'll move this over here. And sometimes I'll start with an exacto knife, but I like to. Do as much as I can with scissors. And I like to cut like a, a halo. So I cut a little bit into the object, the animal. Oh, I just messed up. That happens. And I try not to get too attached to the images. So I started to cut it out of its place and then get a little bit more detailed. And then like in between the legs and things like that is where I would use the X-Acto knife. Sometimes I'll cut off a head or a tail, and that's a bummer. Especially when you've got one that you really like. Now, if I was doing it this in front of a bunch of people, I'd put my hands would probably be shaking, but 
I mean, I know I'm doing this in front of a bunch of people, but but everyone's on on Zoom. Jessica, do you ever print out images that you find online? Yes, yes, I have done that. Um, sometimes, depending on the toner, sometimes that will bleed a little bit. Um, when you start to add the glue. So then I can take my X-Acto and then go in between. And if you don't have a cutting board, I, sometimes I, I would use a magazine if I'm somewhere or I'm not home. And then sometimes you can turn, if you, if you mess up, you can turn it into something else. So that's how I use the X-Acto knife to get the piece out. Sometimes you can glue the pieces back together too. Like I just cut off the birds leg, foot, but it could also be walking and something, you know, I don't have to use that. It could be somewhere else. And then just taking paper and just cutting out shapes um, and, and you know, using color, which I think everyone here is an artist. So it's just using balance and color and, and shape. And I, I mean, most of my collages are very abstract. So I, and I like to play around with location. And I do a lot of cutting and sometimes I don't even use the pieces I cut, especially with some of the COVID cuts. I have a lot of cut pieces, but I have not used. But I'll just start kind of playing off one piece and then Moving stuff around a lot is what I find a lot about. I have some found paper here, like these bright colors. Um, a paper cutter is also really nice to have to get like straight edges. So I'm gonna go cut a piece of paper. Um, so I got this purple line here. Jessica, do, do you have hummingbirds where you live? Yeah, can you hear them? Yeah, I can hear that. It's kind of fun to hear them while you're working on a bird. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I know it's really cool when you film them and uh, you slow-mo on your camera. Have you ever tried to do that? I haven't. It's pretty cool. It's the sound, it's it's really interesting. So sometimes I like to use a negative space too that I've cut out of because that kind of plays with the shapes. So I might just rearrange. I mean, I've never done a collage demo like this, so. And then I have so many cut up pieces, but sometimes I'll just go into there and like see, oh, maybe I'll use a yellow shape somewhere. Play around with 
where to put it. And sometimes I'll decide, nope, I don't want to use that. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go with that. I'm gonna fix this shape a little bit. I kind of get obsessed with certain shapes too, like arches and mounds. But I like right now, I like how this blue is, you can see it down here in this piece here and then over on the other side. Sometimes I'll also take a picture of um, the collage so I know how to put it back together. Um, and sometimes that always changes. Sometimes it never stays. Oh, so I'm just kind of playing around with this yellow. And the reason why I like with the COVID cuts, what I really liked was just gluing down a piece because I can spend hours <laughs> rearranging a collage and just afraid to glue anything down. So sometimes I'll just start gluing and, um, and then I can just go from there. So that's what I'm gonna do. Using that matte medium. And then I also like to, um, Find that. Oh, here it is. Um, use like old phone books because I find I can just um, glue on top of the pages here. So then the stock camera is not wide of an angle. So here's my matte medium. And then I'll just get a little bit on my brush. And then it's also the layering, just figuring out what, you know, making sure you've got it laid out. Just to try and adjust this camera. There. Um, so I use the phone book and I'll, what I'll do is I'll, on the back side, I'll add the glue. The mat, the fluid mat medium, and my hands always get this stuff on it. And then I'll add a little bit to to the paper, so it's kind of like a sandwich. And then place it down. So, so Jessica, a couple questions. Um, do you ever have an issue where the image that's on the other side of the paper shows through? Um, I haven't had okay. that. No, I think it would be, it depends on the type of um, paper um, that you would use for that. But uh, no, I haven't had that issue. And um, then my, my other question is, do you, do you ever have a problem with the paper buckling? Are you using sort of watercolor paper? Yes, this is watercolor paper. So I like to use a thick paper. Um, it will buckle a little bit, but then what I do is I, um, when it's dry, then I'll press it down. I'll put like a book, some heavy books on top of it. Um, it's a good use for those art books you have. You know, those big heavy art books. It's great for pressing down paper. Um, then I've got this like tissue paper too that I might incorporate in there as well to put the bird or just to cover up, to use up some of this white space. Um, so yeah, sometimes another thing I like to use is like just a, a brayer to kind of press down and get it on there. Um, another useful item I've found is using wax paper. Um, 
So I'll just cut off some wax paper and that way, because I like, I do like the white of the paper. And that way when I press down, I'm not smudging any of the ink off the paper or um, and anything that's on my hands. Um, sometimes I'll also use painted paper. I sometimes like, like what I said, when I go into the studio and I'm just cutting up images, sometimes I'll just paint paper also. It's just kind of a, um, just a way to get started. Sometimes it's hard to know where to start. Um, so that's just kind of a habit. And sometimes I'll start looking, I'll turn my paper over and I'll like the image on the backside. You know, so I don't even notice what's on the back side, but I do like that blue, so I'm gonna keep that that teal blue in there. So just adding some blue here. And then sometimes I'll place it down and then lift it up. And then put some blue on top. Magazines, the thin paper does tend to buckle a little bit. Um, I find if you work on wood, that, that doesn't happen. And if you add water, that also makes it buckle a lot too. So then I can take the wax paper and then push it down. Sometimes it can lift a little bit of the pigment off the magazine. The, the um, wax paper does. So then I'm just going in and I'm just layering the pieces. So I'm just trying to commit to these pieces. Sometimes I find the best ones, the best collages I do are the ones I just don't really think about it too much and just follow my instinct um, and the ones I overthink just tend to get, I don't like them as much. And this is really thick paper. So I'll take the brayer and again, just sometimes I just get the paper down and then I can go underneath um, the edges here and get a little bit under there. And it's okay, it's not gonna go on top of the piece as well. This is thick paper that I'm, I'm gluing down now, so it's, it's much harder to adhere. I like the matte medium because it's not glossy. Um, if you use a glossy one, you'll see uh, where your glue is more so than if you didn't use it. And then I'm gonna put this here. So I didn't take a picture of this one and I'm just, just working kind of quickly. Actually I haven't done, I haven't done one of these in a while. Once I finish those 365, oh look, so there's a little piece of gold got in there, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with it. This magazine, so you can, I don't know if you can see here, but it is, it is buckling a little bit. And sometimes that's okay. It just depends. I don't, I don't worry too much about it. Um, Gives it a little bit of texture. So I a little piece of gold fell in, fell into this piece. And I could either I could cover it up too. You know, I've made collages and then I didn't like them, I just gone back over. The nice thing about collage is you can keep layering stuff on top of there. <laughs> it's like an eraser sort of. Okay. 
But I've also, I've done so many collages and there's a lot that I have, I don't like of the ones I've done. And, um, but from those 365, I might take some tissue paper here now. Um, I do have a, there are some that I would like to make into um, larger paintings, take that composition. So it's kind of like a, the collages are kind of like a sketchbook for me to get some ideas down. So I might overlap that, just trying to find a spot that I wanna put on. I'm gonna put it here. Or just overlap and see what happens. The tissue paper, I like working with tissue paper because you have that translucency, transparency that you can see the other colors through. And this is the, of obviously the non-bleeding tissue paper. Um, and then I might take this yellow. And sometimes what I'll do if I have a piece, maybe I won't use the yellow. I'll put the bird here. And I'm still deciding on, maybe I will use yellow, but might change the shape. So like I, like I was saying earlier that I've, a lot of my art involves cutting up objects, materials that I find. And um, recently I've been using fabric and painting on fabric, sewing fabric, cutting up fabric, sewing it together and then painting on parts of it. It's just, I feel like this is kind of a, a nice, I would, I've taken like a week off of making any art, but it's, this is, this is kind of nice just to get back into um, the feeling of making art again, because it's been so long, a week, oh, it seems long to me. It is hard to get back into something. So now some pieces are going off the edge of the paper, and then I might trim that later. Well, I will trim it because it's, it's hanging off. And so I just wanted to kind of balance out that yellow piece there. And we'll have a robin. Over here. So then when I'm done gluing, I just put my brush in the water, but then if I'm gonna reuse that brush again, I definitely want it to be dry um, because any water on that brush will really make the paper a whole lot. And then I can go back and I can trim off some of the edges. So Jessica, you're not uh, diluting the gel, the medium. I'm not, no, that's, I use the fluid matte medium. So it's a little bit, it's thinner. Um, sometimes I'll also use a glue stick, like an acid-free glue stick, and then um, use a glue stick first and then put a layer of matte medium on top. Hmm. 
Then you can add paint to this. Um, so this kind of, I guess is reminding me of like sunrise or sunset, a little bit the lights, the colors you might see. Um, yeah. That's how I make my COVID cuts. Um, Jessica, do you ever have trouble with the acidity of different papers, especially from magazines? I, acidity, uh, sorry, I'm upside down now. Um, acidity, yeah, um, I haven't. I mean, I know those are not archival, but I'm, the glues that I'm using are, um, the magazines definitely will fade over time. So that's a concern, um, but uh, I haven't, if that's what you mean, is that what you're, you're I'm gonna change my camera because I can't, <laughs> can't talk and. Yeah, no, that, yeah, that answered my question. Yeah, I love how it turned out. So Jessica, you'll seal the whole thing with the, the medium afterward, right? Uh, no, I, I just, I put the, the matte mediums underneath the paper and then it's, it's on top of some of the um, papers that need a little bit more matte medium, um, but I'm not, I, do, I don't put another layer of matte medium on top. Okay. I mean, the tissue paper has it. I could. Um, the magazine, magazines are tricky. I feel like you can see how it's buckling here um, just because they're so thin. I don't know, were there any other questions or did anyone want to share something? How do you show them? Do you glue them then to some kind of a board or do you put them under glass? Um, I put some under glass. I, that, that's why I did this piece here because I was experimenting with actually then building a cradle with the wood. Um, I'm just not sure how well they'll I mean, glass is a protectant, obviously. Um, so I feel like I would want that if they were installed somewhere a long period of time. But like at the um, the bus stop, those were all just hung with tacks, and the tacks were just holding the outside of the paper up. Mm, okay. Yeah, and I guess I mean, in some ways, I I guess I don't think of these, this is more like the COVID counts were more like a, a therapy for me, you know? So it's more of like a sketchbook um, series. I've, I've sold a few um, to some um, art consultancies and the hotels and stuff like that, but, um, and they're framing them. And the ones that are at the Arvada Center are also framed as well. Jessica, I love how you picked up on the green, blue, the turquoise like color. You just did that naturally, right? It just seemed like it just flowed together there. Yeah, I didn't know how I didn't know how it was gonna work because you know when you're <laughs> when you're you're demoing, because like, you know, you you're usually making art like this, it's just you're by yourself, you know, and you're you're not even it's just it's it, this is an interesting process for me too, just talking through what I'm what I'm doing as well. Also, I have a question. You showed one of your tools with the finger. I've never seen that before. Can you do? Okay. Can you show us how that works? Yeah. Um, I this one I, I don't use it much because there's another one like this that um, this piece it pivots so you, it, you can get really um right now i can't i don't have that much control over it because i don't know if you can see the blade is it swivels do you see that come down a little bit well, yeah, your you're a little off the frame oh sorry um let me get some contrast here so you can see but the blade It is, if I can get closer, maybe. So this blade, I'm gonna adjust the camera. 
So it swivels. You see how it swivels? Yeah. And um, so you can get some really cool organic shapes with it. The one I want to get there, there is another one too that where the blade doesn't pivot around like this. Um, that's stationary. And then you can, it gives you really great control to get into those really small areas. And um, this is just the Fiskars, um, sorry, Fiskars um, finger knife that you just, it's like a ring knife, I guess. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. yeah that's so cool. That's exactly the kind of stuff that you hope to pick up on it, something like this. Like I would never have known about that. I love how you can get organic shapes like that. You know, like yeah, so, and then this is the circle cutter, which this is also, this is I think the Ola brand or Olfani. Um, but you just there has a point here and then here you just just turn your paper around. This and then that blade's not very sharp. I need to shake the blade, but you can see where you get the circle shape. You can get some really nice circles with that. Sometimes it's fun to just to start cutting circles in magazines and then <laughs> seeing what images come out of them. Just playing around with it. Thank you. I imagine they must have a blades that you can purchase maybe by the dozen or something. Yeah, yeah, like I have a bunch of, um, I have a bunch of X-Acto knives. Um, also, I'm just gonna switch this camera. Yeah, I have a bunch of um, X-Acto knives. I find, sometimes I would just try to extend the life of the X-Acto blade and I just find it's just better just to get a, put a new one in because you won't rip your paper as much. Um, Jessica, since we're talking about tools, can I show you a couple tools that I use? Yeah. So this is a ceramic X-Acto knife and the, the uh -huh. uh, it's actually made out of ceramic. And what's really cool about the ceramic blades is that you they don't cut your finger very easily, <laughs> but you still can get cut. But they're, uh, they can make them duller, but because the material is so hard, they still do a really clean, sharp cut. So you might check into ceramic blades. And then I also have a pair of ceramic scissors. Oh, I don't think I've ever seen those. They can cut through almost anything, and they're also not sharp to your fingers either. So you can kind of, um, you know, do that. And then one, another one is, this is actually from the same company. It's a little cutter but it has a cer tiny ceramic blade sorry and uh it it's really good for cutting stuff out of magazines because you can just maneuver it it's also like a box opener or whatever uh -huh. and so this and they're all from a company called slice and i really i really really like them so you might want to check yeah. those out and how do you find they compare to like the metal blades the ceramic they don't wear out nearly as much and oh, they're, they're okay. just really strong blades and very sharp and um really reliable and then i have one more thing so you kind of i don't know if you do hole punches or not but this okay. particular punch actually does rounded corners so when i do like art cards i can punch out rounded corners on the thing so this is a really cool tool that you might be able to use if you're if you want some more smoother, you don't have to actually try to cut a round corner on a square. Right, right. Oh, so, I like that. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Anybody else have any other tools they want to share? I know, it's <laughs> what company is the rounded corner thing from? Uh, it's called uh, Kadu Maru. It must be Japanese. And uh, I'll put a link or I'll put the name in the uh, chat. Yeah, I found I have one of these. I. There, it's like one of those shape cutters, you know, you just, it stamps. Oh. I just found it at like a, um, like a dollar store. Hmm. And I think, and we have Jill on, who's our marketing person, who's an artist. And she's, for the B exhibit, she actually did a hexagon punch. And oh. she did a, a collage out of, uh, Jill, you want to talk about what you did for the B? Yeah, well, the hexagon, it was a punch. I got a punch kind of like the other one. And I searched all over town 
for a hexagon punch and I couldn't find it anywhere. I finally ordered it on Amazon and I got like the last one. <laughs> it was, oh, wow. it was crazy. I was like so desperate to find this hexagon punch, but yeah, I cut, I punched a whole bunch out. I, I do collage with beer labels. Okay. And so I made, uh, I used be, um, yellow beer labels and then I did the hex guns and I made them into a honeycomb pattern. Oh, someone just gave me a whole bunch of left hand beer labels. That's where I get them from. Yeah. I'm, I'm, oh, okay. Yeah, I've got boxes of them. I've I haven't been, used them yet. Yeah. I'd yeah, love to see a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can look at Jill's Instagram. She's got some photos of okay. that on there. Yeah. I'd like to see that. Yeah, I added some extra things to the to the um, collage as well, wire stuff and yeah and things. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was thinking about also stitching with collage um, mm -hmm. is something I'm gonna start doing as well. Yeah. Do you ever great. do three dimensional um, collage work, Jessica? Um, no. I mean, I've thought about. Well, three-dimensional collage, what do you mean? In other words, like put uh, like uh, Jill puts wire on top of her collage to get more of a three-dimensional kind of look and other things she'll put on there as well. So you, you're you pretty much two-dimensional flat type collage. Yeah, yeah. right now, but you never know. <laughs> it might be uh, tire tubes. <laughs> yeah, no, I was just thinking like all those exacto knife blades. I should do something with that. That'd be kind of dangerous, though. So. <laughs> Have you been making collages with the fabric that you you said you're painting fabric nowadays? Oh yeah, like so behind me, it's just like the experimental phases. Um, but I have a bunch of fabric, and I just started um, sewing it together, um, and then painting on top of some of it. And I think I'm going to keep. Um, cutting it up and sewing it and cutting it up and sewing it and seeing what happens. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Uh, and speaking of fabric, uh, the Denver Art Museum has got a really amazing display of uh, a fox that's got made out of handkerchiefs, but it's a giant fox and people embroidered the handkerchiefs and then they stuck them all together. Um, that's in the each other exhibit, I think, that's at the museum right now. Oh, nice. Right, I think they were bandanas. Oh, right, sorry, right, bandana. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, we're aging ourselves when we say handkerchiefs, <laughs> right? Yeah. Nobody says that anymore. Yeah, but and they were was, bandanas, so it was very colorful and, and it's very large, right? It's huge. Yeah, and that was a nod to uh, the pandemic, also with the, with the bandanas. Yeah. And that is um, how long is that up for? You know. Um, I'm just looking here. Uh, it's through August 22nd. Okay. Yeah. Um, did anybody do any art while we were working that, or you want to show any art? Anybody? I'm working on a collage, but I can't show it because if I lift it up, it'll just fall apart. And there's not really <laughs> much happening here. Just a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> Thanks. Oh great! <laughs> Anybody else doing any art? I didn't do any. I don't, I I don't know why I didn't this time. But. <laughs> or if you have any questions, please unmute yourself and go ahead and ask. Actually, maybe Jessica, do you have any other uh, collages that you could show us? Possibly. Oh, I see. Uh, Wait, Carly's showing us a fish. Hold on a second. Let me. Let me highlight her video. Oh, nice. I'm working on a salmon oil. I like it. He just needs his dots and a few more things. <laughs> That's and I've got another one over here. Whoops, there it is that I'm working on. Oh, yeah. I, do, I like how that the negative yeah. face with it. I just like how that just the outside shape. That's well, I'm trying to make it look kind of like water and I'm not very experienced with these oil paints and um, I'm finding that the thinner I make them, the harder it is to paint with them. So I'm still experimenting, but um, I, I sold one to some fly fishing association and they wanted some for a um, 
fundraiser. So I'm doing that. Okay. Oh, what, what association is it? Um, it I don't know. I don't know exactly. The fly fishing um, of Northern Colorado and Wyoming or something like oh, that. Okay. Okay. Uh, and Jessica, I have to show you my robin since you were working on a yeah, robin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this is a, a little tiny. Oh! Uh, it's an egg tempera painting of a, of a um, robin with gold leaf. <laughs> and it's on a mirror. No, it's gold. It's gold leaf. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. But, it, but I polish it so it looks like it's. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's really cool. I think we want Ed to do a presentation about that, about how to do gold leaf. Yeah, and then yeah. the egg tempera too. Do you make your own paint? I do, yeah. Yeah, you should definitely do a workshop. I should, yeah, maybe, maybe <laughs> sometime. <laughs> uh, anyone else want to show any art? Um, I think everybody's shy today. Um, well, I think I did. You have anything else, Jessica? Let me. I'm just going to show a. I can show you a collage I made yesterday. Oh okay, yeah. Great, great, great. Limbo. Yeah. Can. Oh wait, let me. Uh, sorry, let me highlight your video just a second. Can you see that? Oh okay. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'm, it's, I'm not totally sure I'm done, but yeah, that's what I kind of just. What's it made out of? So. Is it magazine paint? Um, it's not paint. The one I'm working on now has paint because I'm I'm trying to learn how to do abstract painting. So I've been taking some online joy of painting thing and really working on mixing colors. But I, this is not paint. Um, but it's a book and magazine, and I just take stuff from everywhere. Which I was so happy to take this do this tonight and meet another collage artist. So that's that's really been fun <laughs> looking at your yeah. stuff, and yeah. hearing your description of what you do. Thank you. Yeah. There's the, yeah, there's so much you can do with collage, like you can tear paper and that's endless. And Jessica, last year I did the, um, it's it's called Inktober, where every month in October, every day in October, you do a different pen and ink drawing. And uh, that was really tough trying to do 30 different drawings. So I, I don't know how you were able to do 365. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. I, <laughs> yeah, that was, I mean, this, this is the first one I've done since I stopped. So it felt kind of, I tried to do one earlier. I felt a little rusty. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to show everyone a slide with your, uh, with your website and your, um, your Instagram. Uh, so I just found your Instagram account really interesting to see all the uh, collages you did. So I recommend folks look at that. It was it's a really fun uh, Instagram account to follow and and to see all the work that Jessica did on her collage. Um, let's see. And did we have any Jeannie? Do you know? Did we have any comments or anything in the chat? I will check. Okay. And, oh, uh, mostly about the YouTube. This is being recorded. It will be put on our YouTube channel. And by the way, if any of our BAA members do their own videos, like how-to videos, let us know because we'll put you on our channel. Well, you know, we're trying to support our community of artists. Let's see, it's mostly Instagram. Yes, add your Instagram and then at the end, we can save it. You can choose oh, those little dots, right, yeah. at the chat. Yeah. Can you email us the everyone's Instagram? Um, we have an Instagram. <laughs> or, or not. <laughs> Where if you are in the chat and it says to whoever, and then you look over to your right and it's file, then there's three little dots. If you click on those three dots, you can save chat. So you can save it yourself if you wish. Okay. And people are thanking you. It was great. Yeah, thanks for coming. And um, I'm going to show. Uh, so Jill sent her B collage, which I uh, just let me just share this with folks to see. So this is Jill. Your, your oh, B. nice. 
so those are um it looks like those yeah, are those the beer labels <laughs> <laughs> oh i love it I, oh yeah i, I have that box of beer labels i'm like what i can't i don't know what to do with them i don't know it's funny when you get a material and you're like stumped with it i've done i done a i did a butterfly and then i did a one that was like three feet by two feet and it was a giant pine tree <laughs> Yeah, I just. So that's what the that's the punches, right? The um, well, usually, actually, this is the first time I've ever used a punch. I usually just hand cut. Okay. Shape. So I take the beer labels and I just go random cuts and make them different yeah. shapes. Um, and then you know I just use different color schemes, um, to create different types of art yeah. with it. And uh, Jill, it looks like there's wire on there as well. Is that right? Yeah, so I did some wire for the wings and for the antenna. And then um, this is just a silk flower that's that's sticking out of it. <laughs> How did you get the wire? Is it on board? Is it yeah, so this is a cradled board, um, three quarter inch, which is what all of our eight by eights for this show need to be on. Okay. Um, and I just drilled a hole through the board and created the wings like with the wire and then left enough to poke through the board and bend it under and glue it on. So. Wow, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, I drilled holes in it. <laughs> Finding a small enough drill bit for that wire was the challenge. <laughs> but the the hex, it really looks like a honeycomb. Yeah, board. I did do a base paint of a um, cadmium yellow underneath and oh. acrylic. Yeah. Because I didn't want the white showing through. I wanted like kind of a darker contrast beneath yeah. it. Yeah, like that. So yeah, it, well, was, it really came out great. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> and the left hand, you can see the little left hand stickers. On yeah, the I use. I like to use the left hands as like eyeballs and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love those hands on there. That's great. Yeah, thank you, Ed, for sharing that. Sure. Um, well, I, I think that's all we have for today. Jessica, thank you so much for joining us. It was really, really fun and really informative uh let me um let's see i i don't know if anybody else have any other comments we really appreciate you being here today and uh we'll be having another uh so just a reminder our opening reception is on july 2nd that's first friday in july at the uh bus stop gallery and um let's see um and this Saturday, the critique is happening, and we also have the Avalon happening. Yes, yes. All right, and because of our opening show, we won't have a member meeting in July. Oh, okay. All right, I forgot about that. Thanks, yeah. Annie. Mm -hmm. right. How many members are there? Uh, you know what? We, whenever we have a show, the number goes up. Does anybody know? It's it's around a hundred ish. Uh, yeah, I have about 150 or something like that, but I'm not sure. The the names are on our website of, of our members. And we also have um, uh, pages on our site that where we, we show uh, our members' art as well. Um, the member gallery is what I'm trying to say. And Joe Richardson helps us maintain that. Thank you, Joe, for, for putting that on there. Um, so th thanks, everybody. I, I, if you want to just hang out and just chat a little bit please feel free and, and Jeannie I see a bee in your video there I oh that. in my background I, you know I grabbed it this is my bee for the uh show and I don't know if you can see it because yeah. I see Jessica I don't see my I see bee. you I see your bee oh there it is and there's me yeah what meeting is um I the title is the letters just imagine the letters I C D B. I see DB. <laughs> and it's like oh, paint. It. Is it paint? This the this is yeah, but this is pore painted. It, does anybody do pore fluid art? They call it. So I taped, I taped oh. the um, right the hexagon <laughs> hexagons. I can't even talk. And then I poured the paint over it, let it dry, and then I painted the B on top. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. It was fun. Okay, now you can undo me. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Unpin me. <laughs> Anybody else have bees they want to show? I have to show my bee, my other bee. Oh, is it a halo? 
<laughs> now it's this is my oh. ink. <gasps> it's a uh, pen and ink on mylar. Oh, cool. Upside down. <laughs> yes. So this was a really, really fun theme, I think, to work with. I think a lot of people are having a lot of fun with the thing. Ed, are you going to are you going to add anything else to the mylar, or is it black and white? And you're going to cut it out for the eight by eight, right? You're going to have to wait. And no, no, this is the this is not the eight by eight. You're going to have to wait and see. <laughs> this one will actually light up. We'll, we'll, you'll have to wait and see. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Well, th thanks everybody. Yeah, thank you. This was really, really fun tonight. It was fun. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thank you, Jessica. It was great. Yeah, thanks so much.